How's it going guys? My name is Wilson. Before we start this video, many of you guys might know I love saying the phrase absolute travesty on a lot of my videos, especially on my Dwight Howard ones. Shout out to all my day one followers since 2000 subs. I love you all and I want to get everybody's feedback on the potential designs I'll be creating. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Here are some of the designs I'll be making. Option A, black t-shirt with the words absolute travesty in writing. My favorite quote, let me know how you guys like it. Option B, same quote, absolute travesty. Option C, black t-shirt, absolutely useless in white letters. And option D, absolutely useless with absolute highlighted in white. Once again, let me know which options you guys like best. One lucky person on my comments will be selected for a free t-shirt very soon. I truly appreciate the feedback. Now on to the video. There have been plenty of forgotten NBA All-Stars throughout the years, some of whom ended up having short careers with injuries derailing their greatness, others were just overshadowed by better players in their positions. For this video, I'm not going to include forgotten stars like Darren Williams or Carlos Boozer, since they've been multiple time All-Stars, but other guys who are way more forgotten, players that hasn't crossed your mind in years. So here are 20 of the most forgotten All-Stars since 2000. Number 20, Brad Miller, who was actually a two-time All-Star with the Pacers in 03 and the Kings in 04. As the starting center, the 6'11 big man was a 14 and 10 guy in his prime, was 26 and 27 years old at the time, retired in the 2011-2012 season, played for six different teams. Will go down as one of the worst multiple time All-Stars in NBA history. Number 19, Mike Go Red, one of the best players in the awful 2000 draft class, the 6'6 shooting guard had a breakout year with the Bucks his fourth season. In 04, averaged nearly 22 a game, led the team to the postseason. His only all-star appearance went on to average over 20 a game each of the next five seasons, but injuries shortened his career. Number 18, Antonio McDice, who was the former second overall pick in the 95 draft. The 6'9 power forward was a great player in his early days with the Nuggets, was selected to the all-star game in 2001, averaged nearly 21 points, over 12 rebounds, one and a half blocks, Great all around numbers, but was slowed down by a devastating knee injury, only playing 10 games the following season, missed the entire 03 season, became a role player ever since, while many of you might remember his days with the Pistons and Spurs at the latter part of his career. Number 17, Jamal Mashburn, who was a one-time All-Star in 2003, his second to last season, where he was already 31 years old, averaged 21.6 points, over 6 rebounds, 5.5 assists, as well as the best small force in the game, made All-NBA 13 and one Eastern Conference Player of the Month that March led his Hornets to 47 wins but was slowed down by injuries the following season sadly never recovered having microfracture surgery on his knee retired after 04 averaging 20.8 points could have played at an all-star level for a couple more seasons if it wasn't for his injuries number 16 Roy Hibbert now a player development coach for the Sixers the 7-2 center was an all-star in 2012 and 2014 with the Pacers because the East was weak and there wasn't many good big men, Hibbert averaged 12.8 points, 8.8 .8 rebounds, 2 blocks in 2012, and 10.8 points, under 7 rebounds, over 2 blocks in 2014. He was dominant in some stretches, but fell off in the middle of the 2013-14 season, was never the same after, kind of reminded me where Charles Barkley's talents was taken away from him in Space Jam. That's how bad Roy Hibbert got, seemed to have lost all confidence in his game, only played 9 total seasons in the NBA. Number 15, Sharif Abdurrahim. After spending his first 5 seasons with the terrible Vancouver Grizzlies, who were the laughing stock of the NBA. The 6'9 forward earned some recognition with the Atlanta Hawks, averaged over 21 and 9 after being part of the Pau Gasol trade. Unfortunately, he spent most of his career on awful teams, made the playoffs only once with the Kings in 06 and 12 total seasons played. Number 14, Wally Zerbiak, who was the second best player on the Timberwolves before 2004, averaged nearly 19 and 5 on 51% shooting in 2002, was an excellent shooter and great player in the his prime. Also spent time with Boston, Seattle, and Cleveland, retiring after 2009. Number 13, Josh Howard, who was one of the best players on the Mavs during the late 2000s, was one of the most promising small forwards. Averaged nearly 19 and 7 for the 07 Mavs team that won 67 games, but his career went downhill from there. Admitting to ESPN before a playoff game in 2008, he smoked weed during the offseason, and after two torn ACLs, his career ended after 11 seasons. 
Number 12, Gerald Wallace. Back in 2010, averaged over 18 points, 10 rebounds. At the very prime of his career, under head coach Larry Brown, won 44 games that season. Also made all defensive first team that year, but fell off after retiring after the 2014-15 season. Number 11, Jameer Nelson, who still hasn't officially announced his retirement yet. The 6-foot point guard averaged 16.7 points, almost 5.5 rebounds, on over 50% shooting for the 2009 Magic team, setting career highs in points, steals, and shooting percentages. But after a torn labrum on his right shoulder, right before the All-Star break, Jameer was forced to miss the game and was out for 4 months, returned in time in the finals, losing to the Lakers in 5 games, ended up becoming a solid role player, and is now 37 years old. Number 10, Mo Williams, who was an excellent second option on the 09 Cavs team, having his best season, averaged nearly 18 points on over 43% shooting from 3 on a 66 win Cavs team, was added as a replacement after Chris Bosh couldn't play due to a sprained right knee. Mo would end up in Cleveland again for his final season in 2016, winning a championship as a reserved off the bench. Number 9, Mehmet Okor, who would be the perfect stretch 5 in today's NBA with his stellar 3 point shooting. The 27 year old made the all-star roster in 2007, putting up over 17 and a half points a game as the second leading scorer on the Jazz behind Carlos Boozer, who's not as forgotten as he is. The team's point guard Darren Williams shockingly became a first-time all-star three years later in 2010. That's how competitive the West was. Number 8, Danny Granger, who's one of the most forgotten pure scorers in the late 2000s. The 6'9 small forward nearly averaged 26 points a game in his prime with Indy, making his only all-star appearance in 2009. In fact, Granger finished top 5 in scoring that season, behind Wade, LeBron, Kobe, and Dirk. The 25-year-old was in his fourth season and looked to be one of the best players for the coming years, also won most improved player that season. Granger was everything today's NBA GM would dream about, a long athletic wing who can guard multiple positions positions, create and spread the floor, but injuries took a tremendous toll on his body, played 62 games the year after, and took young PG under his wing. At the time, George was a rising star in 2012 and 2013, and Granger's injuries were just too much, last played in the 2014-15 season. Number 7, Devin Harris, who was part of the Jason Kidd trade in February of 08, was on an awful Nets team with Vince Carter past his prime. Carter was not even selected as an all-star that season in 09, but the 25-year-old Harris averaged 20.3 points, almost 7 assists, had one of the nastiest crossovers in the game with blazing speed, but fell off the next couple seasons, never became a great shooter, and was on a terrible team who lost many games before being traded in 2011 to Utah in the Darren Williams package. At least Harris had a longer career than D. Will. Number 6, Jabal McGlure. One of the least deserving all-stars in NBA history, the 6'11 center became a meme this past NBA Finals, being part of the Raptors coaching staff, but not many people know he was once an all-star in 2004, averaged 13.6 points over 10 rebounds that season. Many people still have no idea today who he was. If the East would have won the All-Star game that year, McClure finished with 19 points, a game high for his team, and would have won All-Star game MVP. How crazy would that have been? As a matter of fact, he wasn't even a replacement player, and combined with the fact that the best big men in the NBA at the time were Shaq, Duncan, Garnett, and Dirk, they were all in the West. The East had McClure, Ben Wallace, Jermaine O'Neal, and Ken Kenya Martin. At least he made the most out of his all-star appearance, the highlight of his 12-year NBA career. Not to mention, he averaged only 7.2 points, 6.5 rebounds for his career. Numbers KG, Duncan, and Shaq can average in a quarter if they wanted to. Number 5, Chris Kamen, who is an injury replacement to Brandon Roy, put up 18.5 points, 9.3 rebounds in 2010. With the Clippers team heavily dependent upon his scoring down low, the 6'11 center relied heavily on his post presence and was the most dependable player for the 29-win Clippers team that year. Number 4, Anthony Mason, 2001. The 6'7 power forward was at the tail end of his career at 34 years old, posted his best statistical season of 16.1 points, almost 10 rebounds. Every other all-star that year was a first round pick. In fact, Mason didn't even go second round. Coming out of Tennessee State as the 53rd pick, he was an early selection of the third round, a round that's been abolished a long time ago. At the time, Mace was playing under head coach Pat Riley with Miami, retired in 03 and sadly passed away in 2015 from a heart attack at age 48 and will always be remembered as one of the most beloved Knicks all time. 
Number 3, Theo Ratliff, who was also an All-Star in 2001, averaged 12.4 points, over 8 rebounds, 3.7 block shots at 27 years old. The 6'10 big man didn't get the chance to suit up due to injury, was one of the most dominating interior defenders, but didn't do much else, was nothing more than a role player and a journeyman, played for 9 different teams, not to mention the fact that he only played 50 games that season due to injury, so the Sixers traded him to the Hawks in the package for Dikembe Mutombo after the All-Star break where Dikembe was also an all-star that season. Grabbed 22 boards in the all-star game, that's why head coach Larry Brown wanted him, but Shaq destroyed him in the finals anyway. Number 2, Antonio Davis, 2001, with the Raptors at 32 years old, registered a double-double, averaged 13.7 points over 10 rebounds for the season, and played his best since he started his career with a good Pacers team, coming off the bench his first 6 seasons. He was nothing more than a role player on Indy, but was the second best player with Toronto behind Vince Carter. Matter of fact, Davis and Anthony Mason were chosen as starters, since Alonzo Mourning and Grant Hill were both out for the season, KG replaced the injured Shaquille O'Neal at the center spot for the West, and not to mention Vladi Divac, who's another forgotten all-star I could have named on this list, was the replacement for Shaq. Number 1, Dale Davis of the Indiana Pacers, 2000. Being an average starting center throughout his career, the 6'11 big man averaged 10 and 10, but had very limited offensive skill and got most of his baskets on putbacks and dunks. No doubt he was solid, but you could make the case he was the 4th or 5th best player on the Pacers. Reggie Miller, Jalen Rose, Rick Smith, and Austin Crozier were all clearly better, and Reggie was the only other all-star on the team that season. Shockingly, Davis was not a replacement and will always be known as one of the most random and worst all-stars in NBA history. The Pacers shocked the world the following season season by trading away their all-star center for a young unproven Jermaine O'Neal who turned out to become a way better player. Honorable mentions includes David Lee, Antoine Jameson, Karan Butler, Tyson Chandler, Brooke Lopez, Andre Karolinko, Michael Finley, Jerry Stackhouse, Andrew Bynum, and current players right now in Drew Holiday, Gron Dragic, Kyle Korver, and Jeff Teague a couple years down the line will be even more forgotten as former All-Stars, but their names are still fresh from many fans. That's why I left them out of my top 20 list. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know who you guys think is the most forgotten All-Star in the last 20 years. I love all of you. See you next time.